Hi, this is Dr. Mikola Rashik again of Merit Genomics. I'm making back-to-back -back videos today. And in this particular video, I'll be talking about the latest data showing pregnancy outcomes post-vaccination. So this is specifically for um, pregnant women or women who are planning to get pregnant and see what that might be in terms of getting vaccinated. Very interesting uh, data that I really wanted to share uh, right away. But before we go there, I also wanted to share with you information that I'm planning to have a survey where the audience itself can now decide what the future content will be. I want the audience to be a little bit more interactive as well. I have so much information coming in that I'm literally overwhelmed as to what to pick. And I want you to help me decide as to what you want to see in the future. So the link to the survey will be in the description. Please check it out and decide for yourself as to what we should uh, do in the future. I already have one favorite. Uh, so now let's get to the actual data. This is going to be based on information that came out of UK. Um, those who have already been following the channel for a bit, you know that I love uh, discussing these reports. This is the latest one that just got published three days ago. And uh, the reason why I love these reports is because they are so beautifully composed from a scientific point of view. So let's get right into it. Pregnant women is one of the important target, target groups for genomics uh, because of the potential power of prenatal DNA testing. Very amazing technology where that same technology can be used to monitor for many other areas of medicine. If you want to learn a little bit more about that, you can uh, see, I believe it was video number 19 where I might discuss that in a little bit more detail. So check that out. Now let's see what what they have found in the UK. Okay. Before, I mean, you know, before we even get to pregnancy, let's talk about effectiveness of boosters because they actually reported that as well. Check this out. Let's focus on this. So this is what happened with uh, with vaccine effectiveness uh, after third shot. Um, whether this was AstraZeneca followed by uh, mRNA Pfizer uh, BioNTech uh, booster shot or just a BioNTech, you can see that the third the the vaccine f uh, f effectiveness wane quite uh, quite extensively for AstraZeneca, not as much for the mRNA vaccine, but you can see that after the third shot, the booster shot, the antibodies uh, should be increasing. And, and, and as a consequence, you see the uh, spike in the effectiveness, meaning once again, uh, less likely to see negative outcomes associated with infection. We already know that um, vaccines do not stop infections. That's a serious problem right now that we have to contend with. But nevertheless, um, at least uh, for now, antibodies can continue reducing the problems that are associated with, with uh, infections. We're going to skip all of this because we've already discussed this in detail in the past. Vaccination and pregnancy, this will be the topic of interest here. This is going to be the first area we're going to focus on. This is basically shows you how women, uh, how many women that gave birth uh, to um, basically were vaccinated. And as you can see, the vast majority of women, this is from this uh, throughout the entire year up to the end of uh, or almost end of August. So the vaccination would have started a month prior to that in UK. And recall that UK was the very first nation where, where the first vaccine was administered. That was right at the start of December 2020. And um, you can see that throughout the year, very few women were actually participating in willingness to vaccinate during pregnancy. And that increased steadily over time as the information started to trickle in that it's safe to vaccinate during pregnancy. I do discuss that and some of that information in video number six. Nevertheless, you can see the vast majority of women elected not to be vaccinated when pregnant. And that actually makes some sense. So intuitively, pregnant women decided uh, correctly in a way because recall that when vaccines were actually originally approved for emergency use, they were approved based on extremely limited amount of data 
and there was absolutely no data available when it came to pregnancy. So these vaccines, when they were approved, they were actually not approved for pregnant women use. It only it, it only emerged from subsequent studies uh, in terms of the safety profile that vaccines are okay to to be used. So hence, you can see at first no one was vaccinating, and then it steadily increased. So now let's see what other information we can have. Ethnicity, this is the the likelihood of vaccinate, vaccinating yourself it seems to be very similar amongst all ethnicities, except black women, they definitely um, are in lower end in terms of vaccination. They choose not to participate in the same level of vaccination as other ethnicities. That has most likely to do with uh, historical reasons for how certain ethnicities were well, simply abused in the past. And that uh, that is probably one of the contributing factors as to why. So um, this, we're gonna skip that. This is the one I wanted to show you next. Age groups, uh, what you can see here, and this will be important uh, in terms of the data that I will show you a little bit later, you can see that the older the expecting mothers, the more likely they are to be vaccinated. So you can see very young mothers, almost none of them actually get vaccinated. And then as the age of the mother increases, they are more likely to be vaccinated. You can see that 30 um, women who are in their 30s and 40s are most likely to, to get the shot while pregnant. Nevertheless, it's still only up to a quarter of all women who chose to be vaccinated while pregnant. So the, still the majority of women prefer to be unvaccinated when pregnant. So then let's see what the outcomes are. Here's the very first one. We're talking about stillbirths. And you can see vaccinated versus unvaccinated and combine, and you can see there's basically no difference there. Uh, average, in fact, for vaccinated might be a little bit lower, but there is a greater variance. So the uh, overall risk might even include tiny higher risk overall than unvaccinated, basically statistically no difference. So they're the same whether women, stillbirths, stillbirths are the same whether a woman was vaccinated or unvaccinated. Low birth weights now versus very low birth weights. Again, you see vaccinated versus unvaccinated it looks exactly the same. There is maybe a tiny little uptick in very low birth weights in vaccinated, but then, then again, this is not going to be statistically different just because of the frequency is so extremely low. So the take home message here is that it doesn't appear that there's any difference. And then finally, Let's look at premature births. And here, once again, the take home message appears that whether a woman who uh, was pregnant got vaccinated or not prior to birth, there appears to be no difference in the outcomes. The only difference you might see is right here for the premature birth, there seems to be a slightly higher level of about 6.5% amongst vaccinated women versus unvaccinated. Now that's First of all, unlikely to be statistically different, but there, this could be another reason. This has nothing to do with the vaccine itself. It is likely to be reflected by the fact, as I just showed you uh, previously, that older women are more likely to vaccinate themselves during pregnancy than younger women. And therefore, the cohort of women who comprise vaccinated will be older than unvaccinated women, okay? and Statistically, it's already known that the higher the age of mother, the higher the likelihood of pregnancy complications, including premature birth. This is very well established already. So this is more likely to be reflected by the fact that basically the, this group of women represent older individuals than this group of women. So that's, that's really more likely the true reason why we're seeing this slight difference. So once again, the take home message is that it's unlikely that vaccines are uh, going to 
cause any complications. Real life data does not show that at all. The only other aspect that I wish we could uh, could be presented besides uh, birth outcomes is also the level of birth defects. Birth defects naturally occur as well. There is a certain quantity of birth defects that are presented uh, across all births. Luckily, it's only a few percent, and they. this is the area of interest, of course, for more genomics, because birth defects can be caused to some degree. They, they are caused by extra chromosomes or missing chromosomes or other genetic mutations. There are other reasons as well for birth defects. Some of them can be due to environmental conditions as well, but this is where it would be great to see um, one extra set of information to see whether there is any difference or not in terms of birth defects uh, for vaccinated women versus unvaccinated women. I would imagine based on the data so far we're seeing that there probably wouldn't be, but we don't know, don't have that data. This would be great to see. So this basically, that's all I wanted to present for you guys today. And once again, remember, please uh, vote uh, on the survey as to what kind of information you want to see in the next video. I wanted to mention once again that we have an upcoming event for COVID-19 Q&A. Um, first one was a great success. We're having another one coming up, so check it out and uh, there will be, there hopefully will will sell out uh, again. And um, if you like this video, you know how it works. Please give us a like leave a great comment, leave any comment uh, you, you, you want. Really, we want to engage with, with the audience. We're getting lots of compliments for having fantastic audience that, that is really smart and leaves lots of great smart comments and questions. So continue, please share the video and uh, subscribe to the channel. All of this is uh, fantastic for us and we love you for this and YouTube loves us uh, in return. So. Till next time, have a great day, everyone.